What's going on, everybody? This is Alfred the Butler, and we'll meet my partner in crime, Professor X. It is right here. to the first episode of Unspoken Culture. Unlike other shows y'all been listening to, here we're talking about sports, sneakers, music. My partner, Professor X. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Y'all good? You good? Oh, definitely. Yeah, man, like you said, you know, just uh, bringing something different uh, to the environment, to the world. Like I said, sports, you know. Music, culture, all that. So we already everybody can enjoy it, you know, and all rock with it. So rest in peace, X. That's right, rest in peace. I ain't gonna say the goat, but <laughs> I know some people think he, you know, like you said, he was the Tupac of the of, of the young generation. Yeah, that's a that's a stretch for me, but you know, I ain't, I ain't really part of this new twelve to eighteen year old, so I really can't, you know. Well, we well yeah, we living in that young generation of rap. You know, honestly though, to be to be honest with you though, to bring up this conversation, you know, think about it. We was twelve to eighteen years old. Who was mm-hmm. the rappers in our game? And imagine Kanye West dying, you know, right. or somebody like that. So I mean, I guess you, yeah. can, I guess you can say that here though. But let's go ahead and uh, you know, just send our condolences out to the family. Let's talk about something a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know, sports like the draft last week. Draft. Um, well, you already know how I feel about it. The magic. I have to be, but, you know, obviously, you know, we can talk about our, our um, favorite teams and everything, and, you know, he didn't really have a draft pick due to... I heard y'all, have a, I heard y'all didn't have a draft pick. Uh, since LeBron. He, they gave all the like, picks away. So, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, like one draft pick. <laughs> what, what I found was, I mean, let me get your take on the on the magic pick. Well, first, okay. first off, let me get you, let me give you my take on it, because right. I don't really, I, I don't really get it, because think about all the... It's becoming a guard oriented league. First of all, we can talk about Mo Bamba. Texas <laughs> getting uh, selected by the Magic. I mean, but if you think about it though, no guard was really picked besides Trey Young. Everybody yeah. was, I mean, don't get me wrong, you want you need forwards. I mean, you know, Kevin Knox was drafted by the Knicks and everything like that, but mm-hmm. Aiden, I mean, you know, DeAndre Aiden, you just said Mo Bamba, you know. Uh, uh what's his name? Uh the dude the guy from Duke. Um uh, Babbler, Mark Marvin. Yeah, yeah, Marvin, yeah. Mark Marvin, Bagley, and then Wendell Carter. Man. Nothing but big yeah, man big draft. So I mean, you know, you know the game changing. Golden State Warriors are clearly the the class of the NBA. So you got to kind of had a blueprint of the league. Well, I think um, I just think they trying to be like ahead of the curve, you know. And you see the Suns, they didn't draft the guard. You know, just like you said, there was other teams that got big men. So I think with the, the NBA transitioning to. Uh, like like you said, a guard heavy lead, point guards are starting to score now. I think the thing people or teams are trying to start to do now is take big men yeah. so they can be ahead of the curve. So because uh, the NBA, you know, it goes in cycles. You know, sooner or later, you know, the game might go back to big man being dominant. You know, ball heavy. Uh, but I think with the Warriors now, you know, we're seeing such a unique brand of basketball. We might not ever see that brand again. And you know, we've always been taught that in uh, basketball, you know, the shooters. You know, the shooter, you know, you, you like live and die by the three or by your shot. So, Absolutely. But with the Warriors, I think we're just seeing something we've never seen before. And, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of teams can emulate that. So uh, the next best thing is just to go with size. And I think size will always win at the end of the day, you know. That's true. Guy, you know, guys like Tim Duncan's won in this generation. Uh, uh, even with the Warriors, Javel McGee, you know, played very well for them. I mean, let's, let's put so, it on front street, though, because me personally, you know, mm-hmm. I wish I never – uh, the wish, you know, I always want everybody to be successful in life, you know, but, you yeah. know, being sports radio, you got to compete. I think Trey Young overrated, and if it wasn't for Steph Curry, I don't even think he would have been in the top 10 if he would have came out pre-Steph Curry. I agree. I think Steph Curry really helped Trey Young's draft status. When okay. they start compa- making those comparisons, that's when he really started to skyrocket. And then you can see it when he was in college in Oklahoma, you saw when he started to get that hype and they was putting his box score below on the on the TV screen. Yeah. You see he's starting to turn the ball over more. You Absolutely. see more of his weaknesses. So yes. I'm not sure if he can really handle that, I mean, that spot. I imagine right. Westbrook on, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Like you know what I'm saying? You know, of course, you can drop that on Texas Tech, you know, strong little point guard. But when you got the best defenders coming at you night in and night out, we'll see. You know, like I said, I think he can score with the best of them. But I think he's going to be a defensive liability. But that's just me. And, you know, just another thing in regards to the draft, this one and done thing is getting ridiculous. I mean, I'm, lo- I'm looking at the draft board right now. <laughs> the first nine picks were freshmen. Right. And the only person that wasn't a freshman was Lucas, uh, or Luca Donick. Donick, yeah. Donick. But he was, he's 19. He's 19. So, I mean, he might as But well. you know what? I was just having this conversation with my brother. Uh, see, 
uh, I was telling him like, why are guys like, like okay, for instance, Grayson Allen or uh, DiVincenzo, uh, I hope I'm not his name right, and you know, you know, guys like that. Like, I feel like, you know, I ain't saying they're gonna be stars, but I feel like you know what you're getting with those guys. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. And I feel like teams just get too caught up in the upside. The potential. Yeah, the potential. Yeah. That's why I can kind of see what you and other people say about Mo Bamba. Because people are saying, oh, well, Mo Bamba has more upside than the possible number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton. But, you know, you really don't know what you're getting, honestly. You're just banking on the fact that he did good in a couple workouts in his first year in D1 basketball. But we're talking about the NBA. So... When you got guys that's coming out that's been in college for three or four years, or even, you know, two years, I feel like, you know, they've been more battle-tested than the guys that's, you know. Now, you know, Luka Doncic is different because I guess he's played overseas professionally. Battle-tested. So, um, but he's not like the LiAngelo Ball now. So no. He played an actual really – he played in an actual good <laughs> overseas basketball, uh, you know, league over there. But um, – I just feel like, you know, like I said, teams just fall in love with the potential, the size. and But, I mean, you saw um, Michael Porter fail. So, yeah, I yeah. feel like the injuries has a lot to do with that, too. Um, you know, some of these guys, when they stay multiple years, it's because of something, you know. Absolutely. Injuries, and I, and I felt or, he could have. I mean, me personally, I mean, don't get me wrong, if you get drafted in the lottery, yeah. guaranteed contract in the NBA, making millions, yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, if I was Porter, man, I would have just stayed one more year. Well, see, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think if he would have stayed another year, that would have helped him or hurt no him. Question. Or it would have no. been the same. I mean, I've seen He wouldn't have been number one pick. I've seen it go both ways. Because I think, I mean, if he would have came, because he was already consistent as number top three pick. He, he was like no, the number one pick. Yeah. He, he was like uh, on December. most draft boards. He was number one pick by, by the beginning of this last year. Exactly. So. so, I mean, I felt like if he would have came back uh, to Missouri and, and was averaging 25, 26, of course they would have took him. Because one, he would have been. You know, the only thing that dropped him was his, um, you know, durability, his, his, you know, his health. Um, and he, he, uh, I don't know if you saw the reports. They said uh, uh, his dad is like another LeVar Ball. Oh, no. Right? Like, they said, that. like, he's, oh. they said Michael Porter has, like, a little bit of, a little cockiness to him, or he oh. brings a little bit of that vibe. So they was kind of saying that, too, but I don't know if I really Buy into all that. that. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, when that was just a report. You know, when it comes to the to the draft, honestly, I think the uh, NBA uh, is the only sport where the free agency is actually uh, bigger than actual draft. But why do they do the draft before the free agency period? Uh, is that not the dumbest thing? Something. The NFL doesn't do that. Like, why? Why does the NBA do the draft before free agency? How are you gonna know who to draft if you don't know who's on your team? That is. That is. A weird I don't point. understand why the NBA does that. That's, that's something. That. People with more money get paid high enough to think. And then the NBA, it like, like isn't the NBA draft like the most confusing thing in the world? It like, is. Sixty players. It's like two hundred. Like two get, two get rounds. Drafted. Yeah. It's, it's like I could draft for another team. Like <laughs> nine times. Like like Trey Young's going up there with a with a Dallas Mavericks hat, but he's going to Atlanta. Yeah, like, exactly. Like they already know. <laughs> it's that weird. You're and they was like Atlanta wanted him the whole time, but just didn't want to pick him that very early. early. So just trade back. Well, I think okay. I think it's because other teams are calling. For, I mean, game for that pick, and then I guess they just get the best offer yeah. because I guess teams because like you might not want to pick them, but another team they probably say, "Hey, Dallas, hey, I know you want so and so at three, but I got this other team calling me. They can give me this, this, and that." Yeah. I'm like, okay, 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 we'll just switch spots, and I'll give you this and that. Okay, yeah, so that's probably how that works out. They did that with uh, Vince Carter uh, back in the '98 draft. Right. If I'm getting that correct with Anton Jameson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. drafted him with Golden State. Exactly. Stadium, yeah, obviously Toronto. So that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess so, but uh, you know when it comes to the draft, man, it's all about potential. Kobe so didn't guess. get drafted by the Lakers. No, that's true. That is true. <laughs> so, uh, oh, but, yeah. you know, like it's all about potential. So you know, we'll see uh, the summer league. So who? Um, oh, my bad. Let me cut you off. Oh, so, who, so who's your favorite player in the draft? In the entire draft? Yeah. Um, I like Markel uh, Markel Bridges. Yeah, I like Markel Bridges. Probably she a junior. Uh, the only the first upper uh, upperclassman pick. I like him too. Uh, I don't think he created his own shot, but. I, I don't see why Philadelphia traded him because he's he's an excellent spot up shooter. State. Yeah, I thought he was a state. He's a great spot up shooter, and that's exactly what they need with Ben Simmons and stuff and Joel Embiid. So I felt that they probably might give a burn though. That's <laughs> if you better hope <laughs> no, and pray. I'm you better hope and pray. But like, um, I don't know, man. I think we we can talk Mikhail about LeBron thing a little later. Yeah, we can talk about it later. But, but okay, Mikael Bray, I, I I like his game. I feel like he was 
good. And I like I mean I like Kevin Knox. I mean, you know, I heard uh Calipari uh, you know, out of Dick's I like that pick, man. They did, but I think he was the still in the draft, honestly. Yeah, I think he's next Jason Taylor. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I think when he, it's all said and done. you know, not because he light skinned, but <laughs> I think I think he really is like a Jason Taylor. Like he Long, he can find his little spots. Exactly. And Atlanta. then it's like, oh, he didn't play any defense in college. I Tatum didn't play that. defense either. Yeah, come on now. Tatum didn't play defense either. But I mean, and they're in college for one year. Like. But you can't honestly. A player, if they have talent, is only as good as their coaches. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had Brad Stevens in, in with Boston, and he got. David Fisdale with the Knicks. So, I mean, right. you know, even though, you know, I love Dave, you know, Fisdale, obviously he's with my favorite team, the Heat, and he developed, you know, LeBron. You know, LeBron didn't have a post game when he came to Miami. No. So, I mean, you know. LeBron's they, definitely developed his game a lot. So, I mean, I think, I think Fisdale, I mean, I would prefer Mark Jackson, um, you know, picked by the Knicks, but hey, you know, they said a New York radio station. So, we're going to talk about what's going on right now with the World Cup. Now, you know, I'm not going to come in here and preach to you like I'm a, a soccer savant because I'm not, but I have not. been uh, surprised. Not, you know, <laughs> now I watch, I watch the stars, you know, Neymar, you know, yeah. Ronaldo and Messi, you know, those are just a few that I've seen. I've seen England actually whooped, uh, was it Panama? I think six to one today. Uh, and I've seen, uh, it was Harry Kane. He had, he has five goals so far and had a hat trick. He's a good player. And they, they, anyway, but let's go back to this whole Ronaldo Messi um, goat conversation. Now, the World Cup is basically the soccer Olympics. They, it happens every what four years? Every four yep. years? It's four years. Okay. So, can you really? It's kind of it's kind of like LeBron versus MJ comparison, and then the tiebreaker is gold medals. Like, can somebody explain to me? Can you explain to me at least? Why the World Cup is so big in the eyes of the world? Because if Messi is killing it for three years and Ronaldo is killing it for two of the three years, how can you, you know, like I'm not understanding why the World Cup separates you? Well, um, well, I don't necessarily think it's just the World Cup. Um, I think it's a lot of things that go into it. But the World Cup is like the biggest stage where pretty much everybody in the world pretty much knows about the World Cup. It's like you said, you you don't know anything about soccer, but you know the World Cup. You know, um, and there's other little confederation cups and world championships and all this other stuff. But the World Cup is, you know, that's the, you know, creme de la creme. So if you don't perform in those environments, they're going to look at you as you not being great. Because we all know the greatest shows up in the greatest moments. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, just like what you said with Messi, more people in the world tend to believe that Ronaldo's a lot bigger star than Messi or a superstar because of the fact that Messi doesn't show up in World Cups or he doesn't perform well, you know, whatever. Or he, he performs well, but his team doesn't perform well and he never seems to have success in the World Cup for whatever reason. Um, but I still feel like he's a great player. I feel like soccer players are, they're just, like, it's, it's just a crazy sport. Like, like you know, you hear people getting, like, beat up. <laughs> yeah, they, they, the fans take it way yeah, too they, serious. Yeah, they take it way too serious. Like, they'll you know, throw stuff at you. they like the, the Philadelphia field. Eagle fans on steroids. Right. Like, did you see the Mexico fans got – the Mexico team got fined because the fans were saying gay slurs during the game. Yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, Man, It's, I, it's I crazy. Read, they don't care. I read yeah. multiple articles of um, soccer players, you know, making a mistake during the World Cup, coming back to their home country, getting killed. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. They'll kill you. They get deep. Like, it gets deep. It gets deeper than rap. Deeper, deeper than soccer shit. So they they not playing. So it, it's a lot of pressure to be great. And when you get to a, a level of stature as Messi and Ronaldo, that's something you just got to respect. And but you know just to compare the two, you know that's why I think people are gonna say Ronaldo is a lot greater. Not only do I think he's a greater player. If you you know see Ronaldo and Messi, you know Ronaldo just he's like a magician out there. But because uh, compared to Messi, it's just Ronaldo's had more success on the you know bigger stages, so oh, it's stage. okay. You know, they're, right, both, so they're both great. Let's put you on the spot then. Who, who, who would you take? Start a start a franchise, start a club. Ronaldo, you definitely Ronaldo. all day. Yeah, he's he's one of those players that you will probably never ever see again. You know, he's one of those guys that just like how can you do that with a ball? Yeah, your feet like it's just crazy. You know, yeah, I'm not about to you know you know these old heads screaming you know Pele Pele you know. Nah, um, man, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> 
I don't know about him. I just know Ronaldo. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't about to, you know, even put my intake on it. So I ain't really too big about the whole soccer goal conversation. But I can get back on this basketball goal conversation. Yeah, what's That's, up with this MJ and LeBron? I, don't, I mean, I, I spoke to a lot of people. And after the Boston Game 7 series, man, going after the Eastern Conference Finals, basically, mm -hmm. going to the NBA Finals, the, the conversation was huge. And then after he gets swept by Golden State, everything went to cease. And I don't understand that because I, I don't care what nobody say. LeBron won game one. You know, obviously the teammates, whatever you want to call it, whatever happened after the fact, you nobody in their right mind can tell me that the refs would have switched that call if Michael Jordan had did that to Charles Barkley. Well, give me give me a, a big star in his name. Well, they probably would have called a foul back then. They wouldn't have, probably, <laughs> most likely. But if that was a call, like Jordan, Jordan would get Jordan. the benefit of the he doubt. He would have got the benefit of the doubt. So I don't understand. You know, you can't give me that as an excuse of him. Anyway, he lost game one. Game two, game three, it kind of snowballed after that. Obviously, they got swept. But, mm -hmm. I mean... Are we comparing him as far as the greatest basketball player talent-wise? Because if that's the case, please, can somebody make a case for me? How is Jordan the best basketball talent of all time? Because he's not. He's not. LeBron is that. But if you want to say an overall career, six for six, undefeated, da da da. Well, see, that's the thing. People have different, um, different interpretations of what great is. Okay. Because if you want to talk about legacy and championships. You can't even really talk about Jordan. You got to talk about Kareem. You got to talk about exactly. Bill Russell. Thank you, yes. Will. And then, just like you said, you want to talk about the just talent. Well, LeBron can beat Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. Kobe can beat Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's, it's plenty of guys that can out-talent, you know, uh, Jordan. You know, but I think the best way to really, like, put it is, like, can these other guys survive in other eras? That's right. I think that's really the best. Way honestly, to this. honestly, I I think his Michael Jordan, his his great his greatness is actually contributed by his influence on the sneaker game, his yeah. influence on the younger people. Because I felt like he was he the one he's the player who made it okay to wear sneakers as fashion. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there would be no. LeBron without Jordan. Exactly. So, so I mean, even though he came before him, yeah. I, to me, like people are just so scared to even try to they, they they shut it down like it's not even a comparison. At least compare. Yeah. You know, and then all these people. Another thing I've seen on social media too. A lot of these Kobe fans, man. What about us? What about, what about I, no, Kobe? I, I, I'm telling you, like, I don't know if I told you, but I've gotten in a full blown like conversation with like at least four people. Saying that Kobe's better than Jordan, like literally, like I'm trying to like explain to these people, like, no, you're, you guys are on crack. Well, let me <laughs> hit the crack pipe too me, hard let, today. Let me put, a, let, me, let me just put a, a, a criteria that I think that'll stop all Kobe fans. Mm -hmm. In order for you to be greatest of all time, mm -hmm. you would have to be the best player on your team every single year. Yeah, you can make a case. At least ninety six to two thousand and four, Kobe was not the best player for yeah. eight years of his career. Shaq was the, Shaq was the most dominant per person in the league. Period. You you cannot tell me he. I, I, yeah, Kobe was. Not saying that Kobe kid. wasn't great. Kobe was still great in that. All moment, that I see. But, I see a lot of Kobe fans giving me that stat when they went on in the two thousand two playoffs. Yeah. Shaq yeah. averaged twenty nine. Kobe averaged twenty eight. So Shaq did not ca uh, carry Kobe. I don't care what you say, you. But you knew who was the man. Mm -hmm. You for eight years. If Kobe was player, there. Shaq was averaging forty. <laughs> exactly. But Kobe wouldn't average forty if he was by himself. And 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 honestly, to be frank with you, if T Mac was Kobe was on uh, with Shaq wingman, they would have won three rings to me. <laughs> if Vince Carter was the wingman when Shaq was there, they would have won. I don't agree with that. No, but, no. I don't agree with that, but I do. I do. I do see what you're saying. Would they they would have won, won a championship. Would they would have won. They would have won. Maybe they would have maybe won a championship. With Trace McGrady, yeah. would they have won? With Trace McGrady, this probably they would have won a championship. Okay, Vince Carter. Vince Carter. I don't know about Vince Carter. No, I don't know. About Vince Carter. I don't know. Maybe, but I think Trace McGrady definitely. Trace I ain't McGrady. gonna disrespect him. Okay, but, I mean you gotta remember the Orlando Vince Magic. Vince Carter. Uh, no, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. 
Okay. Maybe. Okay. If you do got Shaq, no. Nah, yeah, Shaq. Just putting out Kobe and taking and then replace this Carter. Him. Take, take a 20 maybe. point score out and replace him. I, I might be score. tripping, but maybe he can win Vince Carter. T Mac definitely is prime, definitely. You know what? The only, the only thing I would give Kobe. Yeah, yeah, the clutch, because Kobe was clutch too. Now. The only thing I would give Kobe is, I think only Kobe and Shaq would have won three in a row. I think Tracy. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, Tracy yeah. would have probably won back to back and lost. Yeah, I don't even know that, bro. And no, nope, I feel you. They would have got one. You would have got. You agree? I would have got, got one. one. Yeah, definitely. And then I, and then I think. I think Vince would have got you one. Vince would have so, got one with Shaq. Okay. Yeah, that was in LA. But that's just you know we can agree this okay. that. So I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, we talking about great players. They're all great. Exactly, players. Exactly, exactly. But I just think Kobe was just a little bit, a little bit better. But he's oh, not Jordan. Jordan. Come on, of course, of course, of course, not okay. Jordan. Now he's not Jordan. <laughs> I don't see why people are just like I, I just stop. It's embarrassing. Stop. It's, it's embarrassing. Kobe. It's he's not Jordan, and, and Jordan. LeBron's not Jordan either. Really, he's, he's not. not. He's not. I mean, Let's he just not compare him till he's retired. That's why I'm like doing the comparison. Cause That's true. People want to bring up, you know, like you said, they talk about legacy, but LeBron's legacy not over. He LeBron, can, 30, 30, he can keep going. more years. Ten more years, honestly. So. Hey, that's true. Not ten, but you know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> he can. He can go, on. man. He can so, go for a long time. Hey, how do you feel about? Um, how do you feel about the Rockets? Kind of not wanting to sign Chris Paul to the Max. Well, they, I heard basically I, I was reading because you know I always read articles and reports. They were basically saying when he left the Clippers, he was guaranteed a max contract. It was it was kind of like a wink wink, but you know handshake. But it's new manager, it's new ownership now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now you know Dale Murray, the Rockets GM, can kind of go back to him and be like, hey, you know, of course we promised this when the old ownership was here, but now you know they kind of run the risk of him walking. And but they I say his family loves LA. Hey, go back man. To the I would let him walk, man. You let him walk. You know why? Because he can't. He can't depend on Chris Paul to stay healthy. That's the only thing. That's the one thing that that the Rockets was concerned about. They know they can win a championship with Chris Paul, but can you do it with him staying healthy? You can't do it. Man. Okay. Thir- okay. That's 30, the only problem. With Thirty-three him. years old. Five years. Two hundred million dollars. Chris Paul's thirty-three. Thirty-three. 33. See, that's the problem. I would not give a 33-year-old that So you money. want to sign this man to a five-year, $20 million contract, no. win one championship this year, no. and then the next year, the next four because, years, you You know why? Because the Warriors are guaranteed to win the next two, at least, the next two. They ain't guaranteed because they could have beat them this year. The Rockets would have beat them. They would have beat them, them, but why didn't they beat them? <sighs> and that's the problem with Chris Paul. I, wanna, like, I, wanna, I, I agree they would have beat them. I was rooting for them. Like I thought they was going to win at six. I said they was going to win at six before the series. They had it. And they just choked it away. I mean, they could have still won the game without Chris Paul, but man, I want um, if I was if, I was if he the was there, they was winning. If Period. I was the Rockets and, and and he said he want to walk, I'm I, I'm got I got to sign him. I need a championship. But, I haven't won a championship since '94. I, I I would rather pay. I would rather. But the Rockets can attract guys. So who? I like want who? But they, Chris Paul. Harden. Harden. I mean, no, I mean, they traded him, They but, traded for Harden, but it's like... Chris you know, Bosh had interest in him. Uh, I mean, I heard LeBron not, don't really have interest in him, but, I mean, you see I him get tied to, you know, Houston. LeBron. I feel just, like Houston's a good destination. So, they're top four in population. I didn't already heard LeBron family don't want to go to Houston. I think LeBron's decision is strictly based off family, honestly. That's what people are saying. I mean, yeah. his legacy submitted. I mean, you know, of course, yeah. he wants to win a championship. I think if he can... Honestly, I think they'll maneuver a super team because I think he'll probably put Paul George... Or Kawhi Leonard. I don't or, see that happening. This I can, year, I can see. Honestly, I can see I Paul don't. George and LeBron going to LA and then kind of recruiting Chris Paul to go over there. I mean, I'll take that deal. I mean, forget Lonzo Ball. I think Kyle that would work. You keep, you can keep Kyle if you if you sign him. But you would have to trade the house for Kawhi Leonard. But that's the thing. Are the Spurs okay? Here's the thing: Is the Spurs willing to trade with the Lakers, and are they willing to take Lonzo Ball? I mean, Kawhi Leonard says he's not going. Or not Lonzo Ball. Um, Kawhi Leonard. No, are the Lakers willing to give up Lonzo Ball and Kuzma? Because that's what it's going to take for the Spurs to do that trade. I mean, Kawhi Leonard has I would want the Kuzma Spurs in a vice grip because he said, "I'm not going to sign. I'm not going to be signed. I'm leaving. I'm leaving." He guaranteed them he's leaving. He said he's leaving. Nobody wants to be Cleveland when LeBron made his decision and have a superstar like that walk out for nothing. So, even if you're trying to trade Warren him Magic. during the yeah, that's true with Dwight, but. Even if you try to trade him during the regular season, say, you know what, we're not trading you this offseason, we want to mend this relationship, and we want to just see how the regular that would season goes. That be the dumbest thing the Spurs need to ever do. Even if he's trying to trade Kawhi Leonard during the regular season, if Kawhi Leonard says he's not going to resign with any other team, mm-hmm. why would they give the house to the Spurs when he said the only team he wants to get traded to is the Lakers? So you might as well get ball. Well, he said LA now. Maybe the Clippers might. Damn the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sleep? I'm trying to give Clippers fans some hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, 
Uh, no, nah, but I mean, um, I would take. I, would I take see Kuzma. where you're going. I would take Kuzma. I see where you're going, but the Spurs, the Spurs, just, just like I said, or like the Spurs can entice the Lakers to, hey, you really want to win the championship this year? We can get you Kawhi Leonard, but like I said, I want Kuzma and Lonzo. And just like you said, if the Lakers aren't willing to get that. Up, I would do that. I would just. Wait. I would do ball. Nah, but you're right. I would just wait. Why not just wait? Because he's going to LA anyway. I mean, just let him. I mean. Just let him thug it out this year. He's not gonna. Well, I was actually. Uh, you he, know, I mean, he's gonna perform well. So I was actually doing some numbers, at. and I seen that obviously LeBron's not taking no discount. Nah, LeBron's not taking anymore. the max. Paul George. No, that's Miami. Paul George is taking the max. They only have enough for two max players. Obviously, with the CBA and the contracts going up, with the cap space going up, Kawhi Leonard can resign for more money. But the contract that he's in, he's like oh, like nineteen. Million, something like that. I think it was like 19, between 19 to 24 million. Uh-huh. They can fit all three on their team for only one year. And after that, when Kawhi Leonard want to re up, that's when they'll go over the luxury tax and everything. So they can actually do that for one year, the, those three players for one year. Me personally. But would you want to do one year right off like that? I mean, if it gets your championship. I mean, because honestly, the only person on the Lakers that's untouchable to me is Nino. Yeah. Ingram, Brandon, yeah, like anybody, anybody else. Kuzma too. I think Kuzma's nah, the leave. I, I, I kicked Kuzma so quick if I knew LeBron was coming. If I knew yeah. LeBron was coming, and then he could just, yeah. he can just get short. I think Kuzma's going to be good. I think he'll be better than Brandon Ingram. I think Kuzma's going to be better No, you sleep. I'm telling you, I think Kuzma's going to be better than Ingram. Ingram can get 18 in his sleep. He can, but he but he sleep too much. That's the problem. Yeah, he's not really aggressive. He he's not that, aggressive. You know what? He you can know, be KD. Do you, do you know how I knew Andrew Wiggins wasn't going to be a superstar? His attitude. He don't have. He's not almost like twenty. He ain't got that If he if you put Westbrook in Andrew Wiggins' body, yeah, he ain't having a thirty forty. Sleep. He be on average. It is thirty fifteen to fifteen. Yeah, <laughs> like, like <laughs> you already got twenty ten. Wiggins don't have that 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 dog in him, but that no, no, you know neither here nor there. So let's like see. talk about super teams and. I just don't see it happening, but uh, I guess with OKC, you know, they had a super team last year, you know, with if you want Paul to call George, that, you want to call Mello, and yeah, <laughs> Westbrook. Uh, what do you think about Mello with uh, his Man. decision? <laughs> uh, my favorite, let me, let me just put it right here on the first on the first episode of this show. <laughs> Die Hard Miami Heat fan. I love Dwayne Wade. Like, Dwayne Wade is my all-time favorite. Of course. Yeah. Uh, before LeBron even came to Miami, you know, my second favorite player of all time was Carmelo Anthony. Wow, I can you can look at those Denver Nugget clip, uh, clips. Oh yeah, he was a man back then. This man, J.R. Smith. Man. I'm thinking this man about to be <laughs> one of the goat. And the way his career is ending, I mean, first of all, you know, multiple multiple reports came out saying that him, LeBron, uh, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, all of them said that they were going to agree and take a three year deal. Back in uh, 2007, when they had, when they, obviously everybody was picking up their player options, teams wanted to sign them to the max, of course, five years. Everybody agreed but Melo. Melo went to five years. When he signed for those five years, he messed up. The, it, Chris Bosh was never supposed to be a big three. Yeah, it was supposed, supposed, to, be, it was supposed to be Melo instead of Bosh in Miami. They would have won a championship with Melo. Take Melo and put Bosh. They would have won a championship. So you, you screwed yourself out of, out of the title because you want a little extra money, a little extra security. So you go to the Knicks. You want to do your own thing. Obviously, you're not winning nothing with the Knicks the way the organization is run. They thought they was at the time. They had a little playoff run. They had a little something. Nothing. A little something. I think they were, they were lost to my – I wanted to play them in the Eastern Conference when they was – back in, you know, 2012 when they lost to Indiana. Indiana, yeah. Um, Should have won, but – Haven't been to a conference final since the Denver Nuggets um, mm-hmm. in 08 or 09 when y'all played the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And – you sign a five-year, $127 million contract with Phil Jackson as a GM. No direction in the organization. Uh, you know, Phil Jackson gave you a no-trade clause, so you have all the power, everything. And you waive your no-trade clause to go to Oklahoma City. You try to give it a shot. I thought that was money. a good decision. Though. I thought so, too. Don't give, I'm not going to. I thought that was a good decision. I'm I thought not, that was the best thing for him. I'm not going to play Monday morning. He actually made an unselfish decision. Once yeah, yeah. I'm not going to play Monday morning quarterback because since in hindsight, I know what happened. Yeah, I thought it was a good decision at the time. Yeah. Obviously, it's, it's not working out. It's, yeah. it, you lost to a rookie in the first round. Mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell's your Pretty much. Player. Lost yeah. to a rookie. Lost to a rookie. And after, right after the season is over with, you already given – Problems because you're telling your uh, Oklahoma City media that Billy Donovan 
you know, ain't no way in hell, basically, you're coming off the bench. <laughs> so you already know that's what they're trying to do for you. They tried that, you know, they tried that basically during the season a little bit. And even in the playoffs, you wasn't doing anything. You look like a shell of yourself. And then today I look at the report. You, you opted in your contract for a one-year, $27 million deal. Now, don't get me wrong. $27 million, $27 million, I know. I understand that. But you at the end of your career, you, you, you're looking at Dwayne Wade right off in the sunset with three championships. Chris Bosh, you know, obviously he's not playing no more. Championship. LeBron, look what he's doing at, at, at your age. And for you to opt in, just it, to me it's like it's a money grab because it's like, I hear you on that. I don't. I do not understand. You're not. You're not going to win it. You're not going to win anything in Oklahoma. But he's probably looking at it like anything. This. He's probably looking at it like this, right? All the stuff you just said is true, right? But OKC has actually had the success that he's looking for. You know, now the past couple of years hasn't really looked good, but um, you know they've they've done some things and gone to West Cross Finals. They've been to the finals. Obviously, KD was the guy. But if Melo wants to prove, like, really. Prove all his doubters and like prove that he's still that mellow, that guy. Maybe he's thinking, well, okay, this is my chance to just try to make things right in Oklahoma City. Yeah, it might look bad, you know, he's taking a lot of money, but you know, hey, it's like you said, it's 27 million. He ain't gonna say no to that. Exactly. But, of course. but he's probably looking at it like, okay, I still view myself as a great player, which everybody should. He's not that. But if he can come out, you know, somehow come out and have a good year, you're playing with another superstar already with Westbrook. It's guaranteed. You know, you don't know about Paul George, but it's guaranteed you're going to play with another superstar. So, you know, it's going to be hard to win a championship in the West. But, uh, you know, I don't think that should be his focus now. His focus now should just be try to make this best situation he can in Oklahoma City. And, I mean, and just right that wrong. Because I feel like if he was to leave Oklahoma City now and – I think I, I think I think people accuse him of trying to like try, try to just hop on a super team, you know, because he kind of did that last year with Oklahoma City. I mean, now we see nobody, it on the super team, but I felt like people out. was talking about them as as potential. No, but no, Western they, Conference Finals. Yeah, you know? I mean, they, when he you know when he joined and Paul George came, yeah, you know people, what I'm like people legit said that was a threat to. And him, I feel like, State. and honestly, I feel like Paul George might come back to the Oklahoma no, City. No, but honestly. why would you? Why would I mean, don't get me wrong. I know the, the deadline. I feel like they come back. The deadline to sign, the deadline to opt into your option is the 29th. You have five mm -hmm. days left. How do you know Paul George even coming back? You don't even know that. Hey, hey you already opt I in. think he is, though. It's for the goddamn money. It's for the money. <laughs> and Melo, I'm so disappointed, man, because I'm telling you, I, Huddy Melo, all this, I'm telling you, when it comes to Melo, he, I'm telling you, he's one Melo's one of the most selfish players, though, in NBA history. He is. And I hate he got that stigma on him because everybody thinks that, and it's like, He's not a selfish guy, but when it comes to money and making decisions about that, he's going to choose the money, you know. And he's 34, so, you know. All right, yeah, man. But Let's see, 16 points a game on 40% shooting. That's horrible. Everything career lows. Everything. This man. It's horrible for his standards. This man, that's kind of bad, though. He had an NBA record for most consecutive 20-point uh, a, a game season. Like, he averaged Right, yeah, he was The yeah. streak ended this year. Yeah. It, it's not a good fit. Leave. Why won't you leave? You have so many options. You could. You got a lot of star power there. I but, mean, um, but hey, it might be different this year. Paul George leaves. He might have a lot more shots. Get out of here. You, you, look, I don't, look. I feel like who, 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 tell I never. Gonna be. He gonna be Utah? A, a, huh? a Donovan Mitchell that's a year older now. He gonna be. They gonna be Utah. Oh, nah, give me, give think, me a team. They that have can no be. shot. Nah. So but why would you go back to a team? That's not no what he's thinking though. He's thinking, he's thinking about, about that twenty-seven million dollars. <laughs> that's what he think about. Look, okay. I, I I look at it like this. He's not the great player as he used to be. But if you can get him, you know, back in his mode, get him one good more year, one good last year, you never know, man. I mean, he's – I look at him as the same as Dwight Howard. Because people like to play him with Dwight Howard in the same boat as like, oh, they're not a Hall of Famer. And I've said Carmelo's not a Hall of Famer before, but I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer, you know, just based off his numbers and things like that. So if I look at him as a Hall of Fame player, right, I feel like, you know, he's going to put that work in and – uh, you know, he, he realized he had a bad year. Everybody's starting to get on him now. Everybody's starting to turn on him now. That's start. That's that's like around the time where athletes start to, okay, let me flip the switch and let me start, you know, playing a little bit better. Now, Melo, if he has a now, – now, let's say this. If he plays a lot worse next year and he's even, like, that much worse, making 20 – because he's going to – it's like you say, he's making $27 million. Yeah. So it's going to be pressure on him to 
average 27, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, if he's not producing like that, averaging 20 a game, and this not assists, getting rebounds, oh, yeah, they're going to be looking to trade him, something. Man, honestly. Cut him. Honest, or, or buyout. Buyout. Like, honestly, I just think the only comparison you can make between Dwight Howard and Carmelo Anthony, they should have both never left their respective team that drafted. Right, yeah, that's basically what the I mean. Almost, like, the worst decision they're, yeah, they, they ever they, made. Uh, their decision making free agency is not the best. They, yeah, they, they, <laughs> their team is just, hey, but. Uh, that's it, man. That's, that's all we need to talk about right now. I mean, it's the first episode of Unspoken Culture. This uh, Alfred Ebola signing off, partner in Crime Professor X. Yes, sir. Hey, man, y'all be good. Until next time. Be easy, y'all. Yep.